Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. What's up, Internet? It's Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That means it's time for Gaming Gumbo, your weekly gaming wrap-up podcast. Brought to you, of course, by Ready Check Radio. If you're listening on Spotify, head on over to readycheckradio.com. That's R-A-I-D-E-O.com. And you can find all the socials in the upper right-hand corner there. Follow us on YouTube. Work the game trying to get us to 1,000 YouTube subscribers so that... Uh, they can tag us in the videos rather than have to put the links in. So if nothing else, get that thing to 1,000 subs <laughs> so that Ginger Prime doesn't keep yelling at me about it. Uh, and, of course, follow Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're using social media, and come on over to the live show. Hang out with chat. We got chat ready to talk about some stuff here. They already saw a little bit of the B-roll, so they know at least one topic we'll be talking about. Joining me to talk about all of it, Mr. Jason Winter. What's up, sir? You know, I'm trying to watch the Overwatch League while I'm doing this, so if I'm a little distracted, don't mind me. Oh, the Overwatch League's still a thing, huh? Still a thing. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. for now, no, it won't go for 11 seasons, but it's still here for now. It's still here Enjoy for it now. While I can. It's still here for now. Also on the line, resident yard artist of Ready Check Radio. What's up, Yod? Hey, should I just change my name to 8-Bit Yod at this point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're a little pixelated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you probably want to sit up a little bit. I think you have your camera... Uh aimed yeah, uh, a little yeah, higher than probably. you normally do so there you go now you're, right. you're a little more in frame a little All more right. in frame. uh my uh my wife said she was like every time i watch gaming gumbo y'all just reminds me of an evil bond villain like <laughs> yeah, he, he just I mean, the, he just chills back in, chair, in his yeah. chair he has the cat sometimes <laughs> exactly <laughs> no mr bond i expect you to die <laughs> <laughs> Sure. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, we're waiting on news from IO Interactive on their Bond game, but you know, mm. we do have a quite a bit to talk about today, and we've broken it up into little different segments. Uh, so, if you want to in on YouTube, you could take a look at the timestamps below. If you're really wanting to jump to some things, but uh, there are like kind of mixed topics in here. They just kind of all fit a theme. So let's start off with, like, do these or can these things actually work, Jason? <laughs> Some ideas or things happening in the game space that you just kind of sit back and go, can that work? I don't, I don't know. Um, it sounds neat, but uh, can it work? So let's start with the first one. Apparently, Bioshock 4 is aiming to be an open world game if... You go by one of the 17 job postings that Bioshock uh, put up. So we got this. We're hoping to find someone who can weave impactful, character-driven stories in an open-world setting. Now, job advertisement also found back last year in 2020 in August kind of suggested that Bioshock 4 will take place in a new and fantastical world. So we're not going to be going to Rapture or uh, Columbia, uh, presumably based on those. But I don't know. Like, I love the Bioshock series, all of them. But I, I don't know if, like, I want that in like an Assassin's Creed vein in that, you know, Grand Theft Auto vein. Like, I don't know if if I want to see that. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. Like, if Rapture would have been an open world, I could have gone anywhere. That might have been neat, but I could also see some catastrophic room for failure on this, Jason, where the franchise doesn't retain its identity when it moves to that kind of new genre by adopting an open world. I think seemingly like a good idea, but turning out to be a catastrophic failure basically explains Rapture. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> good idea. Good, good. That's, that's about it. Good point. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully this one will be better. And I, I don't see why not. I mean, they've got, like you said, they've got good story. They've got good. I've only played, I only played the first game. I'm just kind of vaguely familiar with with the other two, so I don't really know exactly the precise story of them. But they seem like they have good stuff there, and they could work. So. I'm all for it. If, if it's something they can make work, I, I, to answer your question, yes, I think it can work. 
Will it, of course, you know, still have to actually do it, but... I guess, Yod, yeah, one of the, like, saving graces here is that you do still qu- have quite a bit... I mean, the, the team had layoffs and all that stuff, right? Um, right. And then, like, basically went away for a while. <laughs> um, uh, but a lot of the familiar faces from uh, Bioshocks of the past are still on this. You've got Jonathan Peleg, who was designer on the original and a creative director at 2K Australia, responsible for the floating world of Columbia, uh, design director for the new Bioshock. The creative director is coming back as well. You have Scott Sinclair coming back, who was the art director for Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite, also working on Bioshock 4. And the names go on, as well as the addition of some people that have open-world experience. And, of course, these job postings mean that they are looking for more. So maybe... You know, you can be a little more Jason on this one, and hey, that could really work because it, it seems could. like they've meshed a good team of the people who really know the identity of Bioshock and right, some people is, who are open world experienced. Right, which the important part, one of the important parts in maintaining the feel of the game is the creative directors and the lead artists and stuff that designed the original feel of the game. Yep. So as long as they've got those people there and their vision is still going to be, well, envisioned, I guess it could <laughs> womp, work. <womp. laughs> Tark oh, in oh. Uh, chat uh, does bring up a good point, though, that, that I kind of alluded to earlier as well, that part of the identity of Bioshock, though, is that kind of claustrophobic you know, feeling when a big daddy shows up, you're not in a big mm-hmm. open world. And granted, they could still achieve that, Jason, with you know, uh, putting the scare moments or the shock moments in hallways and stuff like that. You could still get that claustrophobic feeling in an open world, but it also does lose a little something as far as feeling as dangerous uh, as it might have been in the past. So we'll see. Yeah, that's why I say I think it can work, but they, they have to figure out how to make it work. We'll keep an eye on it. And again, these are just job postings, by the way. So a lot can change <laughs> between when a company oh. is posting for jobs and when mm-hmm. a game actually hits the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Columbia was kind of open just in the sense that it was, you know, in the sky. But you yeah, you <laughs> couldn't go anywhere you wanted to. Here's another one for you. And I, I am going to be a little embarrassed to admit uh, how much money I may have put into these arcade machines uh, <laughs> back in the day. We're getting a remake. Another one, gentlemen. House of the Dead 2, yes. the on-rails shooter from the arcade, later on the Sega Dreamcast, then spawned Typing of the Dead, which sounded <laughs> dumb but was amazing. Was amazing. Uh... So we're getting a remake of the classic. Now, when my wife and I were dating, there was a movie theater that we went to all the time, like all the time. And there were usually like two arcade machines in it. It really wasn't huge in that aspect. One always swapped out. This one was always there. Always. Like, it never left. The game was five years old, and this machine was still there. It's the moneymaker. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And some of the voice acting, oh, my God, was just so bad it was great. Right? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, Oh, yeah. ah, ah, ah. (laughs) Thank you for rescuing me. (laughs) My favorite used to be putting coins into first and second player shot uh, slots and then so going dual, dual wield. <laughs> yep, I dual wielded that sucker. Uh, <laughs> definitely a lot of fun. So this is coming for the Switch. Now, we've seen some of the familiar characters. The, the v- video footage we've seen, the trailer looks amazing. If you like this game, again, it was an on-rail shooter, so you're talking about a relatively niche audience to, to begin mm-hmm. with. Well, why do I put it in the can this game work category? Well, the appeal to these games, Jason, was light guns uh, and feeling, you know, that VR type experience without VR being a thing back then of you actually pointing the light guns around and and pulling the trigger. Uh, Does this lose something? Because we don't have confirmation on if there's going to be any light gun peripheral for the House of the Dead remake. But we do know if it's on the Switch, you know, obviously the Joy-Cons could kind of, 
you know, be a little mobile, but it's it's just not the same. I don't know. Can this work if there's no light gun? Yeah, you, you said this trailer looks amazing, and I don't agree. Anymore. Oh, I <laughs> love this trailer. But I it's suppose so if you, corny. With, with your experience, yeah, that's the thing. Is, hey, if you have that experience, maybe it does look amazing to you. I didn't play this in arcade, so it looks like... Oh, yeah, don't get looks, me wrong. I'm not saying, like, the graphics no, I, and I, shit I, I are get, top I tier. I get that it's corny. And that's yeah, like, yeah, even, yeah, yeah. It's not even good corny in my mind, though. Oh, it, it definitely but, yeah, is. It, it's also not like, you know, completely overhaul. These are like the same graphics we had. <laughs> that's in the, the game. thing. It's like to me is fine. Because no, that's the it's not game fine. You're playing. It's not fine. <laughs> Especially if, as mentioned, you don't I, and I agree I, I agree with you on this though. It's like I don't think this works without the gun. This looks just ordinary that, yeah, without that's it. That's definitely the issue though. Like it, I, it, I absolutely light guns. The reason you went with the corny graphics and the overacting, or whatever, is because you had the gun in the arcade, you pew pew mm-hmm. pew, or you dual wield or whatever. Right, right. I, I guess if I had my Joy-Con, I, I, maybe I can point it around a little bit, but yeah. But it, it it also doesn't show a courser of any kind, which you have to have if you're using some kind of controller on a shooter game. Well, you do you so, do see the crosshairs go across? Do you? Yeah, yeah, right. Crosshairs. Yeah, there's uh, a it's a right red and cross- it's a red see. and blue. Yeah, just like oh, the well, just like it used that, to be. That, nah. So here's the, yeah, no, no. Yeah. yeah, I mean you could use the Joy Cons, but here's my kind of feeling. Like we I, I don't think I would I would probably have far less amusement with it if I had to use just the Joy Cons. What I'm hopeful right. that they do is kind of like what they did with the Wii and the Wii U, where there was a gun adapter, right? That the yeah, that, that, that could the, work, yeah. the the Wii controller slid into the top of it and it still had the, you know, this whole the, the, the yeah, you know, feel. Th- yeah, that whole feel. So I'm hopeful we'll get a more. switch one Let's of get. those. But yeah. I, I could yeah. not help but smile from ear to ear when I was watching yeah. this. Is it, it's also the, the shooting off screen to reload thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that made it a little sometimes. quicker rather than trying to fumble with a button. Yep. Yeah. I just love so, it. Yeah. Characters screaming their lungs off and you shoot right. the three zombies and then they look at you and go, mm-hmm. thank you for rescuing me. <laughs> really? <laughs> you were just screaming and out of breath. Thank you for rescuing yeah. me. Was... We'll see. Can it work? Yeah. I don't know. Let us know in uh, chat below. Now, also, we're going to talk about this, but we're not going to go super in-depth with this one. We did on the free-to-play cast on MMOBomb.com, so go ahead and check it out uh, on MMOBomb.com or the YouTube channel on the free-to-play cast that went up last night. We talked in depth about this topic, but I feel like I want to ask both of you here. Reportedly, and I know you're going to be stunned by this, the Epic <laughs> Game Store is not profitable. <gasps> Shocked. No. Shocked. All the money they're dumping into it for exclusives and free titles to get everybody there. I'm amazed they're not making money. I, that doesn't surprise any of us, right? We did not yeah. expect this venture to be profitable for years, right? Okay, good. We're all on the same page there. Mm. But, Jason, because of the whole Apple and Epic thing going on, which goes to court in just a few weeks here, we'll be covering that on MMO Bomb as well. Uh, Apple has kind of let the cat out of the bag at just how not profitable the Epic Game Store is, saying that it's, you know, over $400 million spent last year, going to be in the hole for another $179 million for the remainder of 2021, that they don't estimate it's going to be profitable until 2027. Epic for their their end, they're saying, oh no, no, we'll be profitable by 2023. So they're looking in two years at turning a profit. They just got another round of funding, a $29 billion valuation on Epic, another influx of $1 billion in cash, including $200 million from Sony. So we're not talking about Epic as an entity, like going under or not doing well. We're talking specifically about the Epic Game Store. In this crusade against Steam, can the long game that Amazon and and a lot of startups play, can the long, unprofitable game actually make the Epic Game Store more competitive against Steam? Jason, what do you think? I think only if you actually can reduce your competitor's market share significantly, or or maybe even almost to nothing. And that's just not going to happen with Steam. Steam is too entrenched. It's too yeah, that popular. Is a major problem. Even if they don't get all the exclusives that right away like that, they're still going to be making a lot off everything they have and everything they'll get. 
So un unless something really does change, unless like, you know, 70 or 80% of games that are companies that go to, well, if that many, if that many companies abandon Steam to go to every game store, the Epic Game Store is paying them a ton, so they're going even more in debt. And I just think a lot of companies wouldn't do that anyway, even for even for the money. So I, I think it's not going to work. I think at the very least, we are closer to the 2027 date for profitability than the 23 date. <laughs> yeah, I think 2023 is a little ambitious, particularly yeah. if they're eyeing up still buying exclusives at anywhere near the same rate they have over the last year and a half, two years or so. Because that's that's the huge spend right there is locking up those right. exclusives. The giving free games away, you know, that's pennies in, in the grand scheme mm -hmm. of things. Uh, it's the locking up the exclusives. And yeah, it's a new business, Yod. When you go into business, it's going to be anywhere from two to five years before you yourself draw a salary from your own business, much less turn a profit. So right. we don't expect this to be profitable. They're sending money to go after money. But it does, in some cases, a lot of cases for small businesses, reach a point where good money starts going after bad, and then other things start to suffer, like development of the Unreal Engine and, and the, the next Unreal Engine and things like that. Right. Where does Epic fall on this for you? See, the, the, problem, the problem I'm seeing with it is... Um, as opposed to something Amazon where it's a website and you go to the website, you can go to any website and, you know, purchase something. Uh, you don't really, if you're just buying things, we're just talking about buying things on Amazon. Right. And um, this has been Amazon's MO to this day, by right, the way. They're right. after market but, share. They, they make $29 billion when they could, in theory, be making $79 billion if they sold things at comparable prices to their competitors. They go for right. market share by dicing their competitors' prices. Right, but in, in this case, you're just going to a website. In the case of the Epic Store as opposed in, uh, versus Steam, you're more looking at something like Android versus iOS, where it's an architecture that you've bought into. So, so because Steam has been there for a while already, uh, there's going to be people that are living in that architecture already, and they don't want to give up what they've already got. So much like my phone, it, even if I like the features of the the opposition's phone, um, I have a hard time moving to that architecture because all my stuff is already <laughs> on this architecture, <laughs> and and you don't want to you know have to do that all over again. Where with the one you're already living on, you can just hit a button and upgrade or whatever, and transfer from computer to computer because. That's your architecture. That's your lifestyle yeah. already. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're going to run into the issue is trying to pry that lifestyle away from those other people that are already invested in Steam. That and at the end of the day, when you compare just the user experience, Jason, between Steam and the Epic Game Store, sure. I mean, the EGS isn't even close. Like it yeah, isn't even yeah. close. Like that I'm... stuff can come with time, too. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, but how much time but has gone by time. and we really haven't seen oh any of those you know achievements or cards or just some more ease of use in searching for games you also <laughs> it's a little bit of a different game jason i think when you have stakeholders that mm. have names like sony and tencent <laughs> like how long do are they okay with hey we're we're investing in you, and uh, we noticed you threw another four hundred million at that thing. <laughs> yeah, well, this right. is especially why they're saying twenty twenty three probably because they want the investors to think that's only going to be. It'll just be another two years, guys. We promise it will be. Yeah, and, and oh, then it's twenty twenty four. Another two years, and then it'll be well, we 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 were a little off on our estimation. It'll be twenty twenty five. Oh, it's twenty twenty five. We're not profitably okay. Look, we were ju just just gives a little more time, just a little more time. Yeah, okay, whatever. And, and another four billion dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it's too, a yeah, weird right. situation. Like I appreciate Steam having competition. I am not going to you know begrudge that that's to me that gives me better options but the ep and and epic as a company is one of the few that could pull it off has the financial resources to even attempt it and think they could attempt it let alone maybe be a viable competitor at some point but the exclusives aren't doing it like they're getting people there but troy i think said it best on the free to play cast you boot up the epic game store to play a game and then you leave it like Steam is is a hangout in some cases where you right. just get lost yeah. for half an hour going through the store. 
the store isn't intuitive enough or user friendly enough on the Epic Game Store to sit there for an hour and just browse. Um, so yeah, it's not a destination yet. We'll see. Can it work? Which- I hope so, because I want Steam to have competition. That works for me as the consumer, and more importantly, that works for the devs who get into these contracts and these revenue splits on the distribution platforms. They can pit one against the other. Right now, even at 70-30 for most titles, a little out off if you're selling millions and millions of units, but 70-30 for most titles, Steam is still the be-all, end-all if you want people to see your game, and we're two, three years into the EGS, Jason. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. Can it work? I don't know. I don't know. Can't work for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. Can't work for too long. Uh, Resident Evil showcase, though. Moving on from the can it work topic, we're going to talk a little Resident Evil 25th anniversary this year. We've talked about that on the show. We had the Resident Evil showcase yesterday where we obviously expected more news on Resident Evil 8 when it comes out in early May. You can obviously pre-order the game now. We did get new info on that as well as a new trailer. You're watching that in the B-roll footage uh, down below. Apparently, by the way, our big nine and a half foot tall lady, uh, her name I found out is pronounced Dimitris. I was putting a, a French, you know, because it was a or EAU at the end. I was putting a French thing on it, and I guess you know Romanian, totally different sound. So sure. Dimitris uh, is how we say it. So now I don't have to feel like an idiot when I say it. <laughs> There the are tra- other reasons you can feel like... Yeah, oh yeah, but this ain't one of them. You're right, Jason. Okay, yeah, right. This is one we can cross off the list. Gotta say, I loved this trailer as a Resident Evil 8 fan. Got Chris in there, had Ethan, had pretty much all the main baddies that we expect to see. The visuals look fantastic. I can't wait to play this in early May and play it on VR, uh, just like I played Resident oh, Evil geez. 7. I was fantastic. I can't wait to check this out. I still want to see how some of these story threads from Resident Evil 7 tie together and we are getting close there she is the lady herself <laughs> the lady herself cuts him and then starts sucking his blood vampire style it's such an awesome trailer got to have such a taste awesome just a little taste just we little also taste. in addition though we found out that your uh mercenaries mode that was in you know Resident Evil 3 4 5 it's been in a couple of them and has a uh, mostly the same functionality, but there's some variations in it from game to game, where it's a little more arcadey. You gotta you know make objectives and y- your scored points and stuff like that. That mode gonna be in here included with your purchase as well. So all in all, kind of good news. If you want to check it out, there's some demos coming up, Jason. But both of them, they're a little weird. I think the demos. Jason is like enthralled by the trailer what do you like what yeah the reason i'm enthralled by the trailer is i saw it with a half hour video i was like you guys are the, the resident evil experts you can talk about this i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so so what's wrong with the demo because i might even i mean we because this, this is like our this is like our cyberpunk really we talk about this about as much like every week we have some of resident evil yeah. stuff so what's yeah. What, what, what what's so what's so iffy about the demo that's yeah so there's the a new demo and it's going to be released the, remember the last one was just on ps4 right well this okay. one is going to be yeah, on i totally PS4. remember that yeah i was paying all the attention yeah. ps4 <laughs> ps5 <laughs> xbox one xbox series x and s steam and stadia all may right. 1st in north america uh on may 2nd in uh the eu and asia and you're gonna have 60 minutes to explore the village and castle areas that's it. It's a timed thing, 60 minutes per platform that you play on. And they you can split it up between the two areas or you could just spend a full hour in one area. Then they're running this, like, really... The PlayStation 4 and 5 users get what they're calling early access, and the title of it was Eight Hours in Village. And I'm like, sweet. I can play eight hours. That is cool. <laughs> that is an awesome demo. Now, that technically started today, about two hours ago in North America, for the village section only. Right. So if you're on PS4 or 5, you can check out the village section. Next week, you'll get the castle section, and then on May 1st and 2nd, you have, you know, both for one hour. But you really, they only are giving you 30 minutes of playtime 
it's an eight hour window to play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that's the weird part. But by the way, feel free feel free to stream it or 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 put videos up on YouTube. Stream it, and, record it, post yeah, it. Just such that. a weird demo. Like the first one was perfect. The only thing that wasn't great about the first one was how it was limited to like the PlayStation 4, right? They opened this one up, but then don't call it eight hours in village and say, "Oh no, you have you have thirty minutes, Jason." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wasn't wasn't there? A, I can sort of remember watching a streamer doing the, the last Resident Evil, Resident Evil Seven, and there was also like a timed thing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. So that's just that's just what they do. Thing. It's so weird. Like it's it, like I'm fine if you I I would still think that the approach was goofy, yod, but don't name it eight yeah. hours in village. And they're like, yeah, oh no, you have eight hours of people. time to access it, it. Yeah, it definitely kind of confuses like people when minutes. you say that. And then the, you, you know, it's an eight-hour window, but you still only get thirty minutes. Yeah, it's like, um, but you said eight hours. Yeah, eight hours in village. <laughs> awesome in thirty-minute yeah. increments. <laughs> yeah, yeah thirty-minute increments. You can just keep, jump button from one platform to the next, <laughs> and just keep doing the same thirty minutes over and over again. Uh, I mean, if you want to check it out, you can. Right, uh, I'm. I think this one is too time restrictive for me to even yeah, bother definitely. like downloading it. That's the thing. Like, why on earth would I download the a file like this, Jason, onto my let's say my yeah. PlayStation Five to play for half an hour this week, half an hour next week, and then one hour the week after, and then the game itself comes out the week after that. So, like, it's kind of a ah, uh, that's cool, but I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna skip. Yeah, that. you're you're probably a lot of them probably aren't though. <laughs> a lot of people are. Just, they're still gonna do it. I don't know. Oh yeah, I I can see that. They're, All right, Jason. Are... Maybe more of interest to you. In this presentation, we also got the new trailer for the uh, anime. That's coming out Ooh. on Netflix. We've talked about that on the show. Uh, July, July 2021. Leon and Claire in the White House. Got a new trailer for it. Looks badass. Looks badass. Jason, interested? Can I get you on this one? <laughs> Can I sell you some Resident Evil stuff? I got to open my coat here. You need some Resident Evil? I got some Resident Evil. How long is this thing going to be? It's a series. Not the trailer, but it's, no, it's, it's a series. Yeah, it's, a TV series. it's an anime it's series. Like, mm. It's like a single hour and a half thing I might so have been, it, but I don't have, to, I don't have that level of commitment. It's probably, I'm going to guess it's anywhere between uh, 8 to 12 episodes. Yeah. Do you really think it's going to be that many? Like, do we know that? They, yeah. they uh, anime seasons tend to be anywhere between 8 to 12. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's if, about it, right. if it's If it actually airs on TV, it's 12 to 24. But things that are released on Netflix tend to be between eight and twelve. So, yeah, I don't think we yeah. know officially. I don't think we do either. I'm not seeing it, not seeing it in the announcements. I, I, I'm oh, assuming but... it's going to be anywhere between eight to twelve episodes. I would, I would actually be shocked if it's that long. I think, I, I think I'm putting it more between five and eight, kind of like uh, Castlevania. Maybe, but it is the thing is it's also CGI, uh, well, full full animated CGI as opposed to just you know hand painted CGI, uh, which sometimes makes it a little easier to to produce more. Yeah, but, true. I guess. I guess. Yeah, because I mean, we'll Castlevania see, season one only had four, but that was a teaser right. season, and then one, two, three, four. So Castle or season two had eight. One, two, mm. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Season three had ten. By the way, season four coming soon as well. We right, saw new which, art for that. Yeah, yeah. We could talk about that in our show anyway. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because that, that comes out like in a month or so. So <laughs> save can't that wait. for then. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I'm looking forward to this one, too. So All right, so Jason, I can't oh, yeah. I can't sell him the game. We can't sell him the anime, Yod. We got one more shot. How about shot. a movie? We got one more shot. How about a movie? How about a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Live action movie. We talked about it being delayed out of September 3rd into later this year. It has wrapped. Its filming is done. It's now off to the CGI department. All confirmed. How about a movie? Can I get you on a movie? With not not Emilio Jovovich. Movie. Yeah, it's a How about that? Oh, then never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. I mean, it basically did seem to be a requirement on the Emilio Jovovich movies that at some point she be naked with just a piece of paper taped to her chest. Right. That seemed like a requirement at some point because it just carried every, a, damn epi every damn movie. 
some kind of weird medical device around her. Right, right, and ripping, <laughs> ripping things out of her head. Yeah. All right. Ugh. God, Jason, can I get you on something Resident <laughs> Evil? How about I'm this? Looking the, I'm looking for the next topic, and you know that's a hell no. Oh, how about <laughs> this, Jason? Come on. Come, come on. on. You know, VR, come, me, come on. No, 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 no. One, I got one before that. I got one before what, that. The other one in front of that. Yeah, see it? Dead by Daylight and Resident Evil doing a 20th, 5th Resident Evil anniversary crossover in June of this year. There's going to be a full reveal in May. Can I get you on that? It's not not really. I mean, Resident Evil will be there, but how do you feel about Dead by Daylight? Can I get you uh, on? If I, like, angle it in that way, can I get you to play some Resident <laughs> I, Evil? I've I, I, I played a little Dead by Daylight. Ooh, so... Ooh. Sure, I would go for this if it wasn't like something that was going to cost me like twenty bucks to buy a skin or something like that. Sure. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> yes, we got him to play Resident Evil. I'm counting it. Okay. I'm counting it. <laughs> okay. I'm counting. It. As, as long as it's not a twenty dollars skin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm we counting count. it. Screw it. Okay. Okay. And that yeah, counts. Yeah, yeah. That counts. Because there's no way he's playing a Resident Evil 4 remake on the Oculus Quest. <laughs> that, that. Yeah. <laughs> that. It's like, oh god. By the way, that's coming too. A Resident Evil 4. VR version I, on I, Oculus I can, Quest. I can see that going really horribly wrong as someone is playing it, and then a significant other, or some someone else, comes and taps you on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, that that's a good way to get punched in the throat, right? <laughs> that's that's God's will at that point. You, if I'm playing RE4 on Oculus Quest too, and you come tap me on the shoulder, whatever happens, happens. I'm not liable at that point. Oh, I will play this. God. I will play this. I will absolutely play this. Uh, I enjoyed Resident Evil 7 in VR, uh, and so I'm I'm looking forward to playing RE4 in VR. So all in all, a lot of 25th anniversary news for our Resident Evil fans. All right, gentlemen, how about we uh, chat some MMOs? Jason, Elder Scrolls is doing something, right? Elder Scrolls <laughs> Online and loot boxes. Like, I, what is mm-hmm. going on here? So, Elder Scrolls Online has loot boxes, which are like typical loot boxes. You got to pay to, I don't, know, I don't know if you pay for the box or you pay for the key to open them or whatever. The but, box. The box. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. You have to pay real money, which is converted into crown crowns, which was then used to open the crates or whatever. And you get stuff out of them. Okay. But, yeah, par for the but, course. But, here's what they're going to do. They're going to make it possible for you to earn these crates in-game. Okay, you can do that's a good thing, doing, right? Yeah, that's, you can do that's... Week, daily and weekly tasks. Grant you endeavor. Oh, those aren't endeavors. Those daily and weekly tasks are called endeavors, and you can get seals of endeavor for that. All right, I and mean, you can use seals of good. endeavors to buy any of the currently available crown crate items. So, sorry, you don't get the box. You get the items that can be found in the boxes. Even better. So, the boxes. so that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I have a way to accrue cash shop random loot box items without spending cash. Cool. Mm-hmm. And they're doing this because, as, as they recorded the saying, their, their you know, creative director, Rich Lambert, said, we thought this was a very good add to the game because it fits our overall mantra of players can have an in-game equivalent or an in-game way to access anything that we sell in the Crown Store. That's their in-game, that's their mantra. It's like a, they're one of their guiding principles, no doubt. However, Hello. if you also look at Microsoft Xbox Game Studios loot box policy, it states, quote, Items and loot boxes can always be earned through play. All items available through paid loot boxes in our games will also be available through unpaid opportunity by gameplay, i.e. grinding. So, I'm a... If this has been their mantra... Mm -hmm. This game came out in 2014. Mm -hmm. And this is just now being implemented for all intents and purposes, seven years later mm-hmm. so is it now that's our mantra <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> i'm sure it always will this is our mantra always has been you know we I'm just sure didn't do it, it. <laughs> we just didn't do it picture right. astronauts holding a gun yeah you know yeah yeah this was totally their their plan all along not just because <laughs> they were acquired by microsoft no not at all yeah so <laughs> our mantra <laughs> just happens to coincide with the rules by our new owners <laughs> Also, right. also going on for seven years, and then being full of shit when talking about their monetization. Because I still have, <laughs> I still have a bookmark from their from an article. This is from eight years ago, from 2013, before it was launched. When their their game director Matt Fire said, "When you're in Elder, when you're in an Elder Scrolls game, you're in a world. We don't want players to hit monetization fees in, in the world." 
We want to do monetization outside of the game. So if I pay for a month at a time, I have 100% of the game. I don't have to worry about paying one more cent. I yeah, those boxes. that, that, that works for not long. Not no. long. No. It's our mantra. Forget that our overlords that just bought us for one Bethesda. <laughs> uh, forget that that's like their policy. No, that has nothing to do with this. No, it's their mantra. Seven years. We didn't do Always it. Always has been. Always. Always Day been, one, yeah. seven years ago. Yep. Wait, it's all our mantra? Always has been. That's it. Always That's has it. been. Always has been. <sighs> Sad news, gents. Hmm. Hmm. Jason, I think you and I are... I don't know how you feel about this. I'm very, very upset by this. This does make me quite did, sad. Did, did you spend like, money on loot boxes, Mike? No, we're talking oh, about the next thing. I'm talking about the next thing. Oh, the next thing. Okay. The next okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Jason and I were looking forward to this. Yeah. It, yeah. Amazon yeah, I, I has officially canceled the Lord of the Rings free to play MMO that they were working on through a partnership with Leu Technologies. Leu Technologies, after this project had started, eventually was purchased by Tencent. And Jason, I remember talking with you on a free to play cast specifically about this, uh, this game after the Tencent purchase, saying. I wonder what that's going to be like having Amazon and Tencent work together on something. That's like a lot like having two alpha males in the same room uh, working on the same project. Like there's a lot of money behind both, but both are going to want to be in charge. I hope it works out because we were very, very excited uh, to see a new Lord of the Rings MMO. Uh, this coming from Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, uh, of course, reporting it, and then Amazon giving a, a, an official statement after it was reported, saying, we have been unable to secure terms to proceed with this title at this time. We love the Lord of the Rings IP and are disappointed that we won't be bringing this game to our customers. The initial reporting saying, uh, attributing to an anonymous source that the reason is uh, a dispute between Amazon and Tencent that eventually caused the game's cancellation. And you know who is totally fine by this? Lotro. Standing Stone Games. Yeah, yeah. Standing exactly. Stone Games <laughs> is totally fine with this. <laughs> Jason, it is sad news, though. I can't say it's totally unexpected, but I'm surprised that it led to a fast cancellation rather than some type of alternate publishing or alternate alternate development house thing. Like, I don't know. One Tencent or Amazon just buying the project out and continuing it by themselves. I, I'm a little more surprised that that didn't happen. So can can we have a moment of silence for the original grabber stabber? <laughs> but anyway, I'm sort of like like the thing is we do we do literally nothing about this game, like not a single thing. So. On the one hand, I am with you and that I'm sad. I wish we would see it, but I'm also not like totally broken up. It could have been crap. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like, I wanted to see it, but I'm also not going to. This isn't like EverQuest Nexus thing, right? Like actual <laughs> emotion devoted into it or something. It's like, yeah, it didn't happen, but I'm okay with it. Whatever. I'll move on with life. In terms of why it went down or how it went down, it's like, I don't know who I want to blame in this. Because like like I said in the article, it's like normally if you if it's ten cent versus an American company, people in America are gonna they're gonna side with the American company. But Amazon doesn't have any goodwill when it comes to making games. No, like there's and, no reason to believe that they're not in the wrong here. Yeah, maybe they and, are, maybe they aren't. But and uh, this puts even more pressure yeah, on New World, which was already right. under catastrophic pressure to be at least moderately successful. Right. For Amazon games, with Breakaway never seeing the light of day after initial testing, Crucible launching being yanked out of launch and then closed down, New World delayed multiple times, including a delay of all, over a year. We're only a few months away from that one. We'll see. Right. This was going to be kind of a partnership deal. Now it's gone. They still we don't know we don't know for sure that it's lost arc that uh, Amazon has picked up the publishing rights from Smilegate. I actually saw that there actually was something on their page when I looked there. 
Oh, that has it been was confirmed. Like, it's like, I just it was missed like it official, then. yeah. So, okay. but that's publishing only, um, right. which I publishing could actually big. see Amazon being a better publisher of video games oh, no. at this totally. point. Totally. The Smilegate RPG is what they said they're publishing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. Haven't named Lost Ark. My yeah. bad. When, looking at Smilegate's portfolio, it has to be Lost Ark, but uh, and that's rumored to come out later this year here in the West. So yeah, all that's left is the publishing deal for with Smilegate, which is presumably Lost Ark and New World. That is a lot of pressure for a game studio that has now hemorrhaged hundreds of millions of dollars. Forget what the Epic Game Store is spending at this point. Right. Amazon Game Studios, far bigger hole yet. I doubt that Amazon can do the game studio like they do to a website where they just keep losing money until the competition's gone because, well, you got to <laughs> produce a game before you can have competition, right? Yeah, so here's yeah. the here's the question, like for for Amazon, I almost wonder like what made you want to get into development of your own titles rather than just using the financial capital you have to suck up a few small companies and support them in development of new titles, teams that were already working on things, Jason. Like I could see a benefit to an Amazon buying daybreak properties or or buying properties from I don't know. I don't get like why everything had to be from scratch. Let's do state Google does Stadia, right? And they also spin up a development for Stadia exclusive titles too. That's expenditure that isn't going to pay off for years and years and years. I I don't get it. Don't Probably get it. someone there and yeah, you know, we've talked the the one uh expose that I think Jason Schreier actually had like a few months ago was at the some guy I don't remember who he is, like he's the executive producer of their division or whatever. So probably someone like that came out and said, or talked to Jeff Bezos and said, hey, you know, we can do this because we can, because we're Amazon. Yeah. Right. That, was, that was all. That was, that's probably why they're doing it like that way. Why, why, be, why be at least somewhat beholden to someone else, some other company or whatever? We can just do it ourselves. That, that's probably why. Good luck, New World. I mean, I still got and, my... <laughs> you know, I really, feel, I really feel bad for right now is Zach Sharps. Because I'm sweating bullets about Lost Ark's capability. <laughs> yeah, at this point. Yeah, he wants that game so bad. It is a good game. <laughs> it is a good game. Um, we're not going to talk about the Square Enix rumors. Uh, I don't want to belabor points because I've talked about it on other shows. Go watch uh, Ginger Prime Radio on YouTube. I was a uh, guest on a show last night or l yesterday afternoon where we talked quite a bit about the rumors of a number of people being interested in purchasing Square Enix and Square Enix saying the next morning, we're not for sale. We're, we, we're, we aren't for sale. Stop it. I didn't hear that part. Now, whether they are actually, you know, entertaining stuff in the background, who knows, but merger and acquisition talks and scenarios, and that happens all the time. If you want right. full opinions on that, Chris, uh, Brian, and I talked extensively about that. That's over at Ginger Prime Radio on YouTube. You can follow my personal Twitter. Uh, I already tweeted about it there, so you can find a link. It was a great time. I was happy to be on the show. We're going to bring Chris on to... Um, the relic grind sometime as well. Uh, so we're not going to talk about that on this show. Go check out that show. But I want to I want to make you guys feel old. I want to make <laughs> you guys feel old. So here's what here's what I got. Here's what I got. Chat, you ready to feel old? Um I'm going to give you a couple of these items throughout history. Oh boy. Yeah, this is a kind of our miscellaneous segment of the show. There are some gaming things in history that have happened in April that you uh you might you might remember. <sighs> okay. Or might not cuz I'm old. April 4th. <laughs> this this predates me a little bit. Uh actually not a little bit by about 6 years, but April 4th in 1975 Microsoft was founded. Microsoft was founded. So I was zero at that time. Zero. I, I was one year and three months. I was well, negative one, three. A little over one year and two months. You, you weren't negative three. If you were negative three, <laughs> I'm negative six. You can't, you can't be negatives. <laughs> Already <laughs> cheating. Sons of bitches. April 5th, NHLPA Hockey 93 was re released. 1993. You know, I want to bring this up because I, I looked at that thing. And there were a lot of like hockey games that released in April. And yeah. I think that's weird. Because right now all the sports games come out like just before the regular season. Like Madden comes out in July or August, MLB is out in like February or March. 
why was why were the hockey games coming out in April back then? That's like the big one was NHL ninety four. That released in Japan uh, on April eighth, nineteen ninety four, and I played so much NHL ninety four. I think it was ninety five that I had. That I played oh, the so much ninety four. Yeah. Until I found out you could just cheese the goalie if, like if it was on. I think it was, I think it was on the bottom part. You just there's an easy way to just automatically score. Yeah, yeah, was, I, I that kind of ruined it. I didn't touch the hockey games that much. Oh, I'm, I'm to this day I'm a huge hockey guy. Still, still play it. Still play it. So we're gonna get our league going. Our FHM. That's league. right. That's right. <laughs> April thirteenth. Don't. Are you guys looking at this? Don't look at this. I'm not no, looking no, at no, it. Okay. Right okay. So guess the year. See if you can remember the year. April thirteenth. The Legend of Zelda: A Link to the Past is released oh, on the geez. SNES in America. The game, usually considered the best top-down Zelda title, was the third in the series and introduced the dark and light world mechanic to the series. April 13th. What year? Uh, I think I know this one. Go for it. I w- 91. 91? What do you say, Yod? I was going to say 92. It is 92. April 13th, oh, okay. 1992. I was 11. I was 11. My brother just I played the shit out school. of this game, too. <laughs> I was 11. <laughs> Played the shit out of that game. I didn't play until I got it on the a DS a few years later. Sticking with Wait. that uh, that SNES releases of classics, April 18th, Super Metroid was released in North America for the SNES. Another game I played the hell out of. What year? Uh, I played original Metroid. OG. OG on the NES. OG Metroid, yep. 1994. 94. Yeah, we were a Genesis household. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, my, my our, our cousins got the Super Nintendo. We got the Genesis. So, well, uh, your cousins were better. <laughs> yeah, they also had a game cop here, so they had like over five hundred some odd games. <laughs> How about this? What year? April twenty seventh. The Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask is released Ooh. on the Nintendo sixty four in Japan. The game is often considered to be the darkest in the series. So. April twenty seventh in Japan. You can take that one, y'all. Yeah. I don't. I don't know Zelda past like ninety two. Um, I want to say. George's mask, such a good. Ninety seven. Two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah, really? not as okay. not as old as you thought it was. Okay. Not as old as you thought it was. Tons of stuff. Check it out. Nintendo.fandom.com. They've got a piece on everything. There's there's so much more, but just wanted to bring some to the table. You're you're right, Jason. There's a lot of hockey. NHLPA hockey ninety three. Yeah. NHL Blades of Steel '99. <laughs> Blades of Steel, that one I did play. NHL well, the original that's, Blades. That's the original. Yeah, the original yeah, Blades of Steel. Steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did? NHL '94. Blades World Steel. Ice Hockey. Everything's released in April when it comes to. Oh, I don't know why the hockey games were all in April. That 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 a double dribble. Double dribble, yeah. 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 I like, oh, I like double dribble. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I played it. I, I I got so good at that game. I got my brother mad enough to punch a hole in the wall, <laughs> right through his drywall, and, and he like put uh he put one of those uh team pennants, you know, the triangular. Yeah. Yeah, over the wall so that my parents never found out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last thing here, I kind of like this one, so I want to talk about this. I like Metroidvanias in general, so. Like Axiom Verge, I can't wait till Axiom Verge two comes out. So I was uh, kind of interested to see Konami uh, doing a Metroidvania, right? How about just do a freaking Castlevania, Konami? <laughs> uh, Getsu Fuma, uh, Getsu Undying Moon, very Metroidvania like. And Yad, I want your opinion, man, because I think this art style is just incredible. It's got like a very it- Eastern flair to it. While right. still looking very gothic and horror driven, like I, it's incredible. Right, it, it's got the backgrounds have that very like sumi ink, yeah, type feel to it, where where it's like very minimalistic with the brush strokes and stuff, but it still conveys so much. Yeah, it's it's really nice. It's Do you guys very like Metroidvanias? No, I mean, yeah. Jason, I, yeah. obviously you haven't played. I Metroid. played Metroid and Castlevania. I don't need anything else <laughs> after those. <laughs> Steam, yeah, early yeah. access next month, May 13th. <laughs> I, I will say, I, I agree. This does look really awesome. If I wasn't going to play one, this would be certainly on the list. PC and Switch next year, but Steam, early access next month. I will definitely be picking this up in early access. I love Metroidvanias. 
I, and this just looks so awesome. Look at this boss fight. Mm. Yeah. We got it, the it Hydra, looks, the spiders, and... It gives me a kind of, like, Cuphead feel in terms of difficulty. That's yeah, I, I bet <laughs> it is going to be pretty challenging. Bit. Oh, yeah. look at that, two bosses. I mean, it's, this just looks... Some of that animation is just incredible. Yeah, I'm absolutely like digging it's, it. It's, like, half 3D, half 2D. Yeah. That, that's a... Yeah, it's got that 2.5D effect. right. uh, effects going on. Looks fantastic. I I will be uh, <laughs> chat a bunch of people in chat are wish listing it. <laughs> Didn't know it was a thing. I guess. Uh, yes, but but does it combine Tetris and Dark Souls? Undying Moon. Mm. <laughs> it does it combine Tetris and Dark Souls? That's the question. On that note, let's slide over and do games of the week. So apparently. The Twitch and uh, YouTube audience will not hear applause there because <laughs> really? applause was. If you listen to it on uh, on, da- or, um, on Spotify, you will hear applause there. But Twitch and YouTube, it was not in the scene. It was almost perfect. Switching to the new desktop, there was. Um, we got so close, guys. Okay. We're like two right, minutes. Go. Let's provide it for them now. Game of the week. <laughs> all right. All right. God, what do you got? What's the game of the week for you? Uh, for me, it's going to be Final Fantasy XIV, because I expect to be dead tomorrow after my shot today, and I'm going to be playing that and doing <laughs> nothing else. 5-5 <laughs> five, five is good. That I, I, Yeah, I watched the, uh, the Relic Grind for it, and I can't wait to get into that story. So, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's my game of the week. It is fun. What you got, Jason? So as we're doing the show, I was like, crap, I don't have a game of the week. Pick. I don't know what I want. What, what, what I want. So I just opened up my Steam and like, click on something random in here. Like, uh, okay, we'll do this one. Uh, Kona, something I played a few years ago. It's uh, kind of a first-person horror murder mystery kind of thing set in northern Canada in 1970. When you're like, trying to investigate stuff in a that like, sounds frozen very, village like, that's been abandoned. Or Fargo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Frozen well. Canada is always creepy. Yeah, Frozen, <laughs> Frozen Canada. So yeah, pretty fun though. I liked it. It was it was a good good play. Only about ten hours long, so easy easy enough to get through. I'm gonna give it to uh, Pac Man ninety nine. Uh, continuing the trend of Nintendo making things that should never ever be <laughs> battle royales into <laughs> battle royales and them being absolutely <laughs> amazing. Pac-Man yeah. now joins the fray. Uh free, oh but you do need God. you do need the Nintendo subscription, the internet subscription. Of course. Pac-Man 99 tremendous fun. Tremendous fun. Chat, make sure you hang tight after the show. We're going to have Torchwick come on live and start streaming for you. Torchwick, what are we playing? We're going to be playing Metal Gear Solid. So you're still playing Metal Gear Solid. You started that last yeah. week after finishing Fallout. You're playing on the highest available difficulty from the yep. start, right? Because there <laughs> yeah, is so one it, more, but you have to beat the game hard. first. Yeah. How's that going with no radar and and all that stuff? You weren't off to exactly the best start <laughs> last week. No. It's um, it's weird because for the earlier sections, I know them well enough from playing it before that. I, it still takes a try or two, but right. I'm not getting stuck. Right. I'm not sure that's going to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, I haven't had to end. Ugh, I haven't had to end a stream early yet. <laughs> Out of just blind rage. <laughs> uh, or just being boring because we cannot. Progress. I'm done. I'm done. Fuck it. I'm out. <laughs> I'm not having fun. You guys obviously are having fun watching this. Why are we doing this? <laughs> Chat, hang tight. Torchwick will be live right after the show. We'll go li- uh, dark for about 20 seconds or, sh- or so to relabel things and then come on back. Now, no shows next week. Uh, so no Snowbound Tuesday night, no Relic Grind Thursday night, no Gaming Gumbo next Saturday night. All the hosts taking one week off. I'll be gonna, I'm sw- still in the process of switching out a desktop. It worked so well. I got everything I thought I was going to need, except the applause sound effect. The soundboard was not mapped in Streamlabs. So we we were close to perfect with no glitches, but we snuck in there with one glitch. So we're going to take a week off while we can relabel assets, get them all transferred, and and queue everything up. 
there will be all the normal streams though. So like Jason will be here Tuesday night. I'll be here Monday, Wednesday, Friday night, you know, playing games. So the, the streams they're happening. Uh, it's just the shows we're going to take a week off of. So hope uh, you, uh, it just enjoy. says, damn you Twitch. <laughs> yeah. I <it> was like, <laughs> you're roboting and it was all lighting out or whatever. So whatever. Oh, whatever. All right. Whatever. So no shows next week. But come and hang out on the streams. Until the subsequent show, two weeks from now, Yod, where can everybody find you? Uh, Yod works on Twitter, if it works, because I was having problems with Twitter earlier today. Yod works on Facebook and right here on Gaming Gumbo in two weeks. Jason. Find me on Twitter at Winter Informal, streaming at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. And because this is the inaugural weekend of the Overwatch League, I'll take the one time to plug my other little venture, which is find me on Twitter at Owlstatsnet. And go to allstats.net for all sorts of Overwatch League stuff. Mm. Ooh. That's the other thing I do. Unexpected plug. Yeah. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there at Magic Man one So you can go check out the podcast on Ginger Prime Radio that we did yesterday. But more importantly, follow at RC Radio so we can tweet at you every show. Stay safe. We'll see you on the service.